Hello, and welcome to this presentation on self-care for the holidays during COVID times, although this information will apply in the future as well when hopefully we are beyond COVID and not dealing with that anymore. But I'm Karen Wyatt. I just wanted to say hi. I'm going to hide my little picture now. And we'll start this presentation. And I'm glad you're here to learn a little bit more about how to take good care of yourself during the holidays, which can be very stressful for all of us, no matter what type of work we do. And particularly those of us who have experienced losses during the last few years and are also dealing with grief as well as dealing with all of our holiday preparations. So let's get into this subject and talk a little bit more about it. <clears throat> I'm going to share why self-care is important for stress, how holidays affect your stress level, how to reimagine the holidays during COVID, and then specific self-care tips for the COVID holiday season. So let's get started. First of all, why self-care is important in times of stress. Think of it as, and I'm sure you recognize this symbol when it pops up on your phone or your laptop, meaning the battery is running low and it's time to recharge. Self-care helps you prevent burnout by helping you recognize when your battery is starting to get low so that you can continually recharge and refresh yourself so that you don't actually end up in the red zone like this image of, of the battery indicating, uh-oh, things are at a danger level. So if you practice good self-care on a regular basis, you can help keep yourself from getting to this point where you're actually on the verge of shutting down because your energy levels are so low. And the Dalai Lama has written, caring for others requires caring for oneself. And that's just a reminder to all of us because especially during the holiday times, we're all focused on things we can do for other people. And that's really what the holidays are about. But it's essential that we take care of ourselves first if we truly want to be able to give to others. So don't forget that when you care for yourself, you will actually be helping other people because you'll have more energy to give and even more to offer others that can, that can benefit them. So think of it this way. We're going back to our, our image of the battery and uh, the battery on your computer operates when the energy in exceeds the energy going out. Your battery stays charged and full as long as you have a source of, of energy coming into it, which can manage all of the energy that goes out. And when we practice self-care in a similar way, self-care helps us reduce the outflow of energy and increase the inflow of energy so that we always stay in a positive balance. We always keep our energy levels in the green zone instead of the red zone. <clears throat> so looking more specifically, let's start by looking at what causes you to lose energy. And particularly this time of year, uh, outflow of energy and losing more energy than you might on a normal day or in average times, overworking, not sleeping well, uh, dealing with a lot of emotional baggage, which often comes up during holiday times when more family are around and there are lots of expectations. Difficulties in your relationships can cause you to leak a lot of energy, carrying a lot of negative feelings and sometimes just the state of the world around us and, and issues going on in our community and our society can cause us to be holding on to a lot of negative feelings Maybe also we have conflicts in our place of work, the people that we see on a daily basis, and those can tap our energy as well. There are lots of other, other things that cause an expenditure of energy. So these are just some examples of that. But we can get more energy coming in 
by self-care practices. And we'll talk about those specifically today, but also by having a healthy mindset, which helps us approach these times of the holidays in particular, or times when our stress goes up, our mindset needs to be healthy in the sense of remembering that I'm important here, I matter, how I feel and how my energy is handled matters during these times. So having a, a healthy mindset that allows us to care for ourselves even as we care for others is really important. Also being able to set boundaries. We have to learn how to say no when what we're being asked to do exceeds the time we have available to do it. So having healthy boundaries is essential for managing our energy. Uh, dwelling on positive emotions, and that's something you can intentionally work on to keep your emotions as positive as possible. Spending time in supportive relationships, and then finding meaning and purpose in the work that you do, whatever tasks you're doing during the day, if they have greater meaning and purpose for you, as we'll see later, they add to the energy coming in and help reduce the energy going out. And, and we're gonna talk about that again. Uh, Eleanor Brown has written, self-care is not selfish. You cannot serve from, a, from an empty vessel. I just wanted to emphasize that once again, because in our society, many times we're taught that, that self-care is wrong because it's focusing just on me and me alone and that's selfish and that we should be out there wanting to help other people and trying to give to others. But as the Dalai Lama pointed out, and as we're talking about in this presentation, you have to take care of yourself first in order to have enough energy to give to others. You can't be empty inside. You've got to be overflowing with energy and then you can care for others to a much greater degree than if you're exhausted. So let's look at how holidays can affect your stress level because as you well know, I'm sure, holidays can add a great deal of stress to what you're already experiencing in your day-to-day -day life. But first of all, holidays bring both joy and stress. So it's a little more complicated because we do experience joy at holiday times. And when they've done surveys of how people feel about the holidays, overwhelmingly people report that they love the holidays when they are thinking about the idea of holiday celebrations and everything we do during the holidays. People have a sense of joy and positive feelings about the holidays. However, holidays are also stressful because it takes a lot of work and time to celebrate and enjoy the holidays the way you would like to. So while joy is definitely present, there is definitely more stress present at the same time. So again, our focus is on balance here and how do we create a, a healthy balance between the joy and the stress of the holidays. So simply stated, we need to find ways to reduce the stress and increase the joy. And that will help us help us stay in the positive green zone throughout these days of the holidays. And it's, so it's worthwhile to take a little time and think about it and talk about what that means for us. So the joys of the holidays, and these, again, when they've done surveys to ask people what they like about the holidays, these are the top responses that people gave. Um, people mentioned overwhelmingly, they find joy in spending time with family, joy in giving and receiving gifts, joy in the special food and drinks that are often associated with holiday times, um, joy in the lights and decorations that go along with holidays, joy in religious and family traditions that take place, and joy in celebrating and having parties with friends during holiday times. So many different sources of joy for us during the holidays. But the stressors of the holidays are there just as well. Um, stressors include family conflicts because we spend more time with our families and uh, we 
we may experience even greater conflicts than at other times. Overspending and over commercialization is stated as a stressor for a lot of people at holiday time. There's a lot of pressure to buy nice gifts for others and we may go over our budget and, we may, and cause a lot of stress in our lives for that reason. We may overindulge in, in the parties and the celebration and the food and drink. There may also be too many time demands, all the shopping, wrapping, baking, eating, celebrating, decorating, scheduling time with other people. We may also have unrealistic expectations because as I said, for a lot of people really look forward to the holidays. They state the holidays as one of the best times of the year for them, but there might be times when we want more from the holidays than we actually can get from them when what we expect and hope for exceeds what's really possible. So there can be a real letdown at the time of the holidays when things just don't work out the way we wished they would or the way we imagined or dreamed that they would be. And then also we run out of energy, we just get exhausted. And that can keep us from really enjoying the holidays when we're too tired to really have fun and really experience that joy as we're going through our celebrations. So another factor to consider is that sometimes the things that bring us joy do it during the holidays actually can lead to more stress if we don't have proper balance. And we talked about things like the healthy mindset and setting boundaries. If we don't have a good balance, then the joys that we're seeking can turn into stresses. So let's look at that. Time with family can lead to that family conflict that we mentioned as one of the most common stressors that can happen during the holidays. So we spend more time with family, but then we're more susceptible to experiencing conflicts when we're together. And we get joy from giving and receiving gifts, but that can also lead us into overspending. And we experience the over commercialization of the holidays, all the advertising that's out there, stores just packed full of gifts and you know, signs urging us to buy more things and get more things for other people. This, the special food and drinks that we enjoy so much, of course, can lead us to overindulging. We love the lights and the decorations, but that takes a lot of time in order to decorate your house, um, put up lights outside, whatever else you might enjoy for decorations indoors. That requires a lot of time and energy. Our religious and family traditions bring us a lot of joy, but as I mentioned before, that can also be a source of unrealistic expectations when those celebrations don't turn out the way we hoped they would when something goes wrong or maybe some of that conflict happens during some of those events that we've been looking forward to. And parties with friends can, of course, exhaust us and lead to overindulgence there, too. If, if we have too many parties to go to and too much of our energy being, being spent during those parties, which we enjoy and we love, but we can easily become exhausted if we're overdoing it. So, again, balance is essential during this time, figuring out how much energy do I have to give? Where do I want to give it? And how do I keep it in balance so that I don't get into the red zone? So remember, this is a really good point. Holidays do require work. There's no other way around it. To participate in the holidays, you will be doing more work than you do on ordinary days. But the joy of the holidays is greater than the stress of the holidays if you find meaning in the work you're doing for the holidays. So that's a really important point to remember. If there's meaning and if you're doing this work for a purpose, you will get even greater joy and more energy from doing the work of the holidays. And it will exceed the stress that you're under. However, stress becomes greater than the joy of the holidays 
if the work you're doing is done out of obligation rather than meaning. So if you are buying gifts for people, not because you really want to, not because you're excited about it, but because it feels like an obligation or an expectation and there's no excitement or joy in going shopping and finding just the perfect thing. In fact, you feel annoyed and stressed that you have to shop for someone and you have no idea what to buy for them. Well, your stress level goes up. You're spending money. You're using your time. You're doing it out of obligation because you should, not because it comes from your heart, not because it has deep meaning. And so that task doesn't feed you, doesn't give you more energy. So that's something that adds to your stress, but doesn't give you enough joy to make up for the stress that you're experiencing. And there could be lots of things. For some people, it's doing a lot of baking at the holidays because maybe they feel others expect that of them, but they don't really enjoy it. And maybe it's, maybe it's decorating, maybe it's going to parties, whatever it is, if you are doing any of this work out of obligation, rather than from your heart, and rather than being filled with meaning and purpose, that's when your stress level is likely to get out of hand, because you don't have enough joy returning to you from the time and money and energy that you're spending that's when you're gonna get into the red zone from the holidays. So it's important to take stock of everything that you're doing this year related to the holidays. And so I'm going to suggest that we reimagine the holidays. And in some ways, COVID gives us an excuse to change the way we celebrate the holidays and to change the things that we would ordinarily expect from ourselves in another year when there isn't a pandemic present. Now we've already had a year of COVID holidays last year. Um, and this year we don't fully know what to expect from the virus, but once again, it's not going to be like the old days. This is going to be a different experience for us this year. And so it's a good time to reimagine how we do the holidays. And I'm suggesting you focus your holiday celebration on whatever has the greatest meaning for you, whatever brings you the greatest joy, and minimize the things that have very little meaning that don't bring you joy. So let's look at this. Um, during COVID, sometimes the the joys of the holidays uh, actually end up being losses for many of us of the, of the holidays. It's not what we used to have in the past. And we've already, like I said, we've already been through one year of COVID holidays and we're about to go into it again. So time with family might be less available to you because of COVID. You may be less able to travel you may be less likely to get together in large family groups this year. Once again, because of COVID, you may not feel that it's safe to travel or to be together. So time with family may be something you're losing this year. Giving and receiving gifts might be harder if you're not together physically and you have to mail things. And we've, we're also being told that the, there are supply chain issues going on. And so it may be more difficult to shop for gifts this year and to find what you want on the shelves. Special food and drinks can still be there. You can still enjoy those because you can prepare them yourself wherever you are in lights and decorations. You can do that wherever you are in whatever setting you're in. Family traditions for some might be harder also. And religious traditions, just again, depending on where you are and your ability to travel, your ability to be present in physical space together with others, that may be different this year than in years in the past. And again, parties also may not feel as safe. They definitely didn't feel very safe a year ago, but they still might not feel safe this year. So that may be different than what you're used to. And some of the other stressors of these holidays that are still there, financial stress again, because to do all of these things, buying gifts and celebrating and decorating um, usually requires us to spend more money than we would. And perhaps during this, this entire time of the pandemic, some of us may have been out of work and we may 
not have the income that we've had in the past with um, money, expendable money that we can use for the holidays. Loneliness for many people has been an issue, again, because of difficulties traveling and meeting one-on-one -on -one with other people. And the holidays can often be a time of loneliness for any of us who can't get together, even under normal circumstances, who can't be with people we love, or maybe don't have anyone in our lives that we can spend the holidays with. I think loneliness is, is a bigger problem than usual this year. It was last year as well. And a good thing for us to be aware of. It's nice to have some solitude actually. So a little bit of time alone for reflection during the holidays, but loneliness is really challenging. Um, there can be fear present, a fear of getting sick or of making others sick if we are getting together with people. So we may feel uneasy about any gatherings that we are going to be attending or sharing with other people because of the fear of the virus and of new variants that are coming on the scene. And we may also be experiencing grief and probably most of us and many of us are experiencing grief to some degree or another over losses. We may have had a loved one die in the last two years um, or even loved ones who've died at any time in the past. And our grief tends to come to the surface and be much more present for us during times of holidays as we recall the times we used to spend together with those that we love. And we're so much more acutely aware of their physical absence during these times. So grief is another issue causing us a lot of stress during the holidays. Um, again, grief, if we've lost employment in the last couple of years or, or our, we've been forced to change our employment, we can be grieving that, the loss of our work. Um, we may have lost our normal routine that we've had in the past, just the little things we used to do from day to day that have all changed. And we're, we're doing things differently now just to get by each day. And that can be another source of grief and, and even our normal holiday routines that have changed. Um, we could be grieving the things we're not able to do this year that we used to do. Social events, another thing we could be grieving over the loss of some of those events, things we used to attend. Granted, this year, there are more things happening than happened a year ago. So we do have more available to us this year, including public celebrations this year, but still we may have some grief over losing things that used to just be a given that we would take for granted at holiday time. But I'm suggesting to you that COVID has given us an opportunity to leave behind those obligations of the holidays and to help us reimagine new meaning within the holidays and new joys. So that's the thing I really wanted to stress for you to think about this, think about how you're going to spend um, the, the rest of the, the year celebrating their whatever holidays you happen to spend. And I'm going to give you some suggestions for some new joys, new ways of celebrating that you might, and I might experience or might focus on this year. So a new joy of togetherness and some, some new ways of being with people you love. One, um, if you can't be together physically in the same room, you could do something fun like watch a holiday movie with other people in your family at the same time. I did this with my kids and their spouses last year and we're doing it again this year. We're all going to watch the same movie at the same time and we're gonna be on Zoom and on text message and messaging each other about the movie, laughing together and sharing it. And we're going to be um, decorating Christmas cookies at the same time while we watch the movie. So we're going to take breaks in the movie and show each other the cookies we're decorating. So we can still have our, our family movie night that we used to have in the past and our cookie decorating time that we used to spend. We can still do it. We're just doing it virtually. But we already did it last year, and it was really fun, and in fact, so fun that we were excited to plan it again for this year. 
Another joy that you could experience for togetherness, if you can't be in the same physical space, maybe you have elderly parents and it doesn't feel safe to be with them indoors because of the risks of of new variants or something, you can cook favorite foods. And maybe you, if you maybe each family member makes a different portion of a meal that you might share together, you can cook the whole meal with each person making their, their dish for the meal, dividing it up into individual servings, and then drop off the servings you know, so that each person has a complete meal and you could share it together virtually if you can't come together in the same physical space. So it's kind of a fun way. You're all eating the same meal. You could be eating it together over Zoom um, if, if you can't be in the same physical space. You can sing carols or other music together over a video chat. You can also light a menorah or a canara candles together virtually as well. So you can maintain those rituals and share them together virtually if you can't come together in the groups you would like to bring together this holiday time. Maybe you can get together with smaller groups this year but and zoom in the other people who live elsewhere who can't be there at the same time. And so I'm encouraging you to find a new joy of gift giving and to continue this forever from now on for all the holidays from now on, even once COVID hopefully has left us. Um, because I think it's time in terms of how we treat our planet as well. We need to decrease our consumerism and buy less, waste less. So I, I hope that you'll focus on that as gift giving and you can actually find a lot of joy in giving smaller, simpler gifts to people. So remember that less is more and focus on minimalism and focus on the tiny, small things that you can do for someone else or give someone else instead of trying to buy a big, expensive, fancy gift for someone. And I love this idea of practicing conscious consumerism. And it's recommended that you focus in on four types of gifts that are practical to give to people. First of all, something useful. So someone that, something that someone needs that they will definitely use if you know that they, will, that they have a need for it and, and you are able to give that to them. Something to use up. So that could be a food item, something uh, to a food item to cook with or make a special dish with or, or something you bake or make for another person or some sort of an item like a toiletry item, you know, bath salts or, or something that people will use or a candle is another nice gift that someone can burn and will use up. So not something that's going to become a new object in their home that will be there forever, but something they can use up. Something to wear is also a nice gift, especially if it's practical and because it's something again, that's, that's useful that people can can make good use of and they can pass it on when they're done using it to another person, uh, donate it to a thrift store where someone else can have access to it who can continue to get usefulness from that item. And another good type of gift is something to read because it's always nice when we can give people the gift of inspiration or education through something beautiful to read. So maybe you're cultivating a list of books that you love or poetry. Um, I would include in there music, something to listen to as well that you love. That's always a wonderful gift to give to someone that can give them a lot of meaning and joy in their lives. And so if that's a really positive type of gift to share, if you know the other person's taste and know what they might like. Another great type of gift is to give experiences rather than material items. And so an experience would be something that you plan together. One, one year, um, my daughter gave us a picnic on the beach. So she prepared the food for us 
and had a picnic basket for us and took us to a really special spot with a beautiful view. And we had a picnic at sunset and watched the sun go down. It was amazing. And so that type of experience is a wonderful gift. You have to be creative to think of what to give, but, but you can include things like tickets to some sort of an event or a museum, a concert, um, you know, an art walk, um, a bot botanical gardens perhaps, um, or again, a, an experience that you might share with another person like the picnic that I was talking about. So I think um, if you're really creative, you can, think of some low cost experiences that you could treat another person to. And maybe the experience is something like, I, I'll clean your house for a day, or I'll babysit your children so that you can go somewhere and do something, or, or your pet, <laughs> or uh, I'll take your pet for a walk for uh, five days in a row so that you can have more free time, something like that. You can also make simple homemade gifts to give to people that are again, practice that follow minimalism and conscious consumerism. I have a few ideas to share with you of things that you can make for people. Um, this first picture is something that I love that we used to make as kids, but actually as an adult in the old neighborhood I used to live in, I would make these clove oranges for people where you, all you do is stick whole cloves into an orange and it creates a beautiful aroma of orange plus the clove smells really wonderful. And it lasts a good, you know, say week to 10 days, maybe even two weeks if you make it and give it to someone. It's like something they could put in a bowl of fruit or um, put in a special bowl with some scented pine cones. And the scent from it is really beautiful. And it's kind of an old fashioned type gift. Uh, but it's really lovely. You can also, besides cloves, you can also use allspice to stick in the side of the orange. And if you're really creative, you can make, um, arrange the cloves in different shapes and decorations to make it look really lovely on the outside. So <clears throat> that's kind of a very fun, simple gift, something children can make easily to be given to other people. Um, next, these are, this is also something I've made. Um, beeswax candles at craft stores you can buy very inexpensively sheets of beeswax and they come in various colors this is the natural color but you can get them in red, red and green or blue as well if you'd like and all you do is roll the beeswax up around a cotton wick and you can cut the beeswax into various shapes so you can if you cut it into a large um, triangle, you can, you can fold it up starting at the long end and it makes a kind of a Christmas tree shape for a candle. So you can, you can get really creative with the beeswax and make different shapes. You can twist it to make kind of a spiral shaped candle and you can make it thinner to make a taper candle, a long thin candle like a taper. So these candles burn really well and they also smell really good. The, the smell of the beeswax is really pleasant. It's not, um, it's not like an artificially scented candle. It just has a pleasant aroma to it. Again, it's something easy to make, not very expensive, but that people can use up. So you could give someone a candle and a tiny little dish or plate that the candle could sit on to catch any wax that falls down. But um, these have been really fun, fun gifts. Again, I've made them a lot with my children to give away to people. When my children were, were young, they're not that young anymore. Um, and this is another gift that we've given people in the past. Uh, the supplies to make luminarias, you've probably seen them before. Um, they're paper bags that contain a candle inside. You can either use a real candle that has to be lit, or you can use a, a battery operated electric candle, which is safer inside. And you usually put sand inside the bag to weight it down. You can also use rocks as a, a weight to keep the bag from blowing away. If you live in a windy area, I don't recommend using real candles that you light 
for the risk of the bag burning on fire, but there, it's absolutely beautiful. As you can see, you can light a pathway with luminarias. So in my old neighborhood, one of my neighbors one year gave everyone on our block the supplies to make our own luminarias. They brought us a bag of sand, um, the, these paper bags and the candles and with instructions for how to make the luminarias. And we all made them and put them out on our sidewalk on Christmas Eve and lit them in the evening it was absolutely beautiful. So that's another fun little gift that you can make for someone over the holidays, a beautiful way to share the light of, of this gift. And there are many other simple things that you can make. If you look online, you'll find a lot of different simple little crafts and I realize it takes time. So once again, you're, you'll be giving up time, saving money perhaps, but spending more time if you make gifts. But these homemade gifts have so much meaning to them. They're really fun to make. And it feels lovely when you give someone something that you actually made by hand. Baking, of course, is a great thing to do to share baked items with people who would love that as well. But there are many other ideas you can find online for making something simple for, Chris for any of the holidays, not just Christmas, but Hanukkah gifts, um, Kwanzaa or any other holidays that you celebrate. So we're gonna talk specifically about self-care tips for the COVID holiday season. So I wanted to start by, first of all, helping you imagine minimalizing the holidays, paring them down so that you're focusing on what has the greatest meaning for you and turning something stressful into something with more meaning. So as you pre prepare, for the holidays this year, the first thing to remember is just to plan ahead. Um, be thinking ahead of what you're going to do, what you're going to focus your time and energy on, and how that's going to play out over this next month. Make sure you schedule some time each day for some kind of self-care. It doesn't have to be a lot of time, just 15 minutes is enough time, but 15 minutes for you when all you do is focus on yourself and what is helpful to you for your self-care. Um, prioritize your physical health because for many of us, what happens in the winter season as we get into the holidays, we get run down and that's when we're likely to catch a cold or get sick with, with anything else. So prioritize physical health, make sure you get a little bit of mild exercise, go for some walks, um, go to the gym, do some exercise at home. Um, if you can just to, just to keep your body moving a little bit every day, uh, try to eat healthy, even though you may be going to parties and sharing a lot of holiday food, focus again on just getting enough fruits and vegetables in your diet. If you focus on making sure every day you get some healthy fruits and vegetables, that will help you because you'll be less hungry for eating all the sweets and the other treats that are around at the same time, which you should still enjoy for sure. But you may be able to eat less of those when you're balancing your diet with, um, with healthier food as well. And try to get adequate sleep. So you might need to make that a priority, going to bed a little bit earlier at night. Uh, to make up for nights when you might be staying up later, going to parties or having other celebrations. So, or take a nap every now and then. So focus on getting enough sleep. I would recommend that you es establish a daily practice for stress relief. Maybe it's meditation or prayer or contemplation during that 15 minutes of time that you're giving yourself. That's a good time to do some meditation and prayer. You can do some yoga or stretching combined with that. It's really nice for your body to stretch a little bit and then take a few moments to relax. And again, with prayer and meditation and also combine some deep breathing because that can ah, really help your entire body relax. It induces the relaxation response. If you inhale and then exhale for a longer period of time than you inhale. So say inhale for five counts and exhale for seven or eight counts. 
that helps your body relax when you're feeling a lot of stress. So you can utilize deep breathing during these 15 minute sessions that you're taking for yourself each day. Create a budget for your money and for time. Decide how much money are you willing to spend so that you can sit down and analyze the things that you want to spend money on and decide what fits or doesn't fit within your budget and do the same thing with your time. How much time do you have to give to these holiday events from day to day and week to week so that when you're prioritizing what's most important to you, you're aware, I have this much money to spend. I have this much time to give. And that can help you make choices. So because we're talking about kind of reimagining these holidays, you might need to change your mindset. That includes letting go of the old expectations, what you thought you had to do or should do in the past, you just don't necessarily have to do anymore. And one of those activities might be sending Christmas cards to people or making a gingerbread house. You know, there might be things that have been on your list that you do every year, always in the same way. If you don't get joy from those things anymore, they don't bring you pleasure or they don't have meaning for you. Those are things to think about. Can, can you let it go? Um, because this is not a year for you to be giving up your energy for something that doesn't have joy in it for you or give you deeper meaning. So let go of what you have always expected from yourself around the holidays and be open to creating something new. Be, use your creativity, be thinking always of what's out there. Even watch online and social media and see what other people are doing. You might find a suggestion that um, seems interesting, something you would like to try. Maybe you don't have time this year to put up all the outdoor holiday lights you used to do. So maybe you just put the lights around one window or you light a few candles in a window that will shine outside. Be spontaneous. Sometimes the most fun you'll have will be something you decide to do on the spur of the moment because you hear about it or someone invites you to do something. So make sure you have enough time and energy available for those spontaneous times when when you can just just get the idea and and go do something that's that's really fun in the moment maybe you drive somewhere and look at the stars on a beautiful night when the sky is really clear maybe you drive around and look at the lights in other people's yards maybe i i don't know it could be anything but be open to being spontaneous in the moment because sometimes those events are the most fun and the most, enjo most enjoyable and have the deepest meaning. Accept the circumstances that you cannot change. Maybe things have been canceled that you thought you'd be able to attend. Maybe you hoped to travel somewhere and now you can't go. Um, you're just going to have to accept the things that don't work out this year that aren't, aren't the way you wanted them to be. And get past that because the more that you complain or dwell on you know, your disappointment or the negativity around it, then the more energy you're expending in that space of negative emotion. So focus less on complaining and more on gratitude for what is working well and the blessings that you do have in your life. Now, I understand that some of us may have experienced um, the loss of a loved one in the last life. And so I'm not um, demeaning at all the, the powerful sadness that you might feel right now. And I'm not suggesting that you can easily, that you should be at all um, trying to rid yourself of that feeling. I think it's really important to honor your grief and honor your sadness and your sorrow. And, and I'll mention that again in a future slide. But I'm talking more about the circumstances in your external life, um, the events or the situations that don't work out. I'm not talking so much about the personal losses and the pain that you are carrying with you right now, which I don't mean that you at all should try to rid yourself of. That pain and sorrow needs to be carried 
with grace. But it is helpful if you remember to find something each day to be grateful for, some blessing that is present in your life, if you can, to be grateful. Because gratitude is one of the positive emotions that can add more meaning and more joy to your day. So some more tips, develop some simple rituals to honor your grief. As I said, do not try to rid yourself of grief or deny it or lock it away anywhere. Pay attention to your grief, embrace it, and find a place for it within your holidays. So these rituals are things that can help you honor whatever grief you're carrying, if it's about the death of someone you care for or just about the loss of, of something else in your life. You can light candles. Candles have such special symbolic meaning. The light that shines in the darkness, bringing warmth into your life. And so candles are so wonderful and they're such a very special part of all of our holiday celebrations that remember to set aside some special candles, maybe in a special part of your house on a windowsill, or you can have a, like a little altar or table in a corner where you have candles that are symbolic, maybe for a person you love that you're, who's not with you this year, whether they've died or they simply can't be with you. You can have candles that symbolize that person. You can um, put a picture of the person by the candle so that you can spend some time each day thinking about them as you go through your candle lighting ritual. You can also use cooking and baking as a way of dealing with your grief. Um, find a recipe for a favorite food of your loved one, something your loved one always enjoyed eating at holiday time and, and make that dish in that person's honor and enjoy it yourself, share it with other people, even give it away to other people you know and let them know um, this was my mom's cookie recipe. These were her famous cookies she made every Christmas and now I'm making them for you to give to you. Um, listen to favorite music, your own favorite music, the music that someone else always enjoyed and loved or that you enjoyed sharing together. You can combine that in a ritual with lighting the candles and looking at the other person's picture. You can listen to music during a special meal that you're sharing. Um, you can gather virtually with other people who are also grieving the same loss and have a virtual storytelling session where you share stories from the past about the person that you love that you're not able to be with. Um, and each person can share something special that they remember. Um, oftentimes these stories end up being humorous and filled with joy for everyone. And that can be a really meaningful way of, of embracing and celebrating a loss that you've experienced. And remembering to bring in laughter. So laugh as often as you can. Watch funny movies or videos online. Um, bring in laughter. And again, that can be part of the storytelling session that you have, remembering to just laugh together because laughter is a really good way to increase your energy and um, release the stress and tension in your life and also give you more joy and meaning in what you're experiencing. And the point above that, find meaning in the small moments of life and work. And so I purposely put this picture here of a little cup of coffee with a sweet little cookie with it. Um, whatever you do during the day, that's part of your ritual, find meaning in it. Stop for just a moment while you're having that cup of coffee. Don't drink it mindlessly, but sit for just a moment, feel the warmth of the cup. Feel the steam on your face, savor the, the aroma and the flavor of that coffee and um, the taste of your cookie or whatever you're eating along with your coffee and just savor it and take it in. Even the smallest moments of the little rituals and the things you do during the holidays can be filled with so much meaning and, and bring you the sense of inner peace and joy if you make the most of those. 
So a few quick tips for recharging your energy. And this is to utilize on a day when you've just had too much to do, but you're not done yet. And now you're supposed to go somewhere and be with other people and you're feeling exhausted. Or maybe it's the day after you've been, been out at night and you've got to get back up again and go to work and get through your day. So some quick tips to recharge your energy. Um, first of all, uh, physical, to get more physical energy, you can eat a protein snack, such as a piece of cheese or some nuts. If you're feeling really depleted and exhausted, just a, a small, quick little snack of protein can sometimes help boost your energy, get your metabolism going again. You can take a power nap of just 20 minutes or less. If you feel really drowsy or sleepy, just to lay down and you might need to set a timer for 20 minutes so you don't go over it. Partly if you sleep for too long, when you wake up, you may feel worse. You may wake up in kind of a drowsy state, but to just close your eyes for 20 minutes can actually be very refreshing. So, so if you can get away somewhere and just allow yourself this brief little nap, that can really help. Going for a brisk walk outdoors in the cool air, that can help you wake up and feel a little energized. Just a short one down the street and back or around the block. Um, you can drink a glass of water because sometimes the reason we're tired is we're just a little dehydrated if we've been on the go. We haven't been getting enough, enough water in during the day. So drinking a glass of water can actually be really helpful. You can do a few stretches, just standing up, reaching up toward the ceiling, standing on your tiptoes, um, stretching from side to side, twisting a little bit, um, touching your toes. Some stretches can be invigorating as well. Put on one of your favorite songs and dance a little bit. That's very energizing, especially like an upbeat song that you can you know, just do a little dance around the room that can get the blood flowing and get your energy back. You might have a cup of tea if you have a favorite type of tea. I wouldn't recommend chamomile or something that's more relaxing, but a, a cup of green tea or a spiced tea that gives you some energy. And you can do a little self-massage of your shoulders and neck to get rid of some of the tension there. That can also get you physically recharged a little bit so you feel ready to keep going and move on to the next task. Mentally, it's important to think about recharging your mental energy as well. If you've been working hard during the day and now you're going to try to change your focus to a different activity, but you feel like you just don't have the bandwidth, um, first turn off electronics and close your eyes for 15 minutes. If, if you've been looking at a screen all day, it's really important to take a break, close your eyes and just let your brain and your mind uh, have a rest from the stress of staring at a screen. Take a little break from the work you're doing and listen to music. Um, again, close your eyes if you can, just put on a song that's relaxing for you and, and listen to the music. Uh, dim the lights wherever you are and sit in silence for a few minutes and you can um, meditate a little bit during that time, but just getting rid of the noise and the stimulation by, by dimming lights again, turning off the electronics, that can help your brain recover and recharge. And maybe switch to tasks that require less brain power. So if you've been focusing a lot on a, a, a work on online on the computer, something that requires you to be very focused and attentive, switch to something that you don't have to think about that's a little more mindless. Um, putting away supplies, cleaning up a little bit, running an errand, uh, something completely different, but that doesn't require as much thought, deep thought and focus. So to recharge your emotional energy, um, for one thing, you can take three deep breaths, which helps alleviate some of the stress and get you into a more relaxed state. And if you're feeling anxious or nervous or tense about something, the deep breaths can be really helpful. You can watch a funny video, uh, something short online. There's one that I love is called Buddha on the Train. It's on YouTube. It's really this simple five minute video of 
a person on a train who starts laughing and eventually everyone on the train is laughing for no reason and you will be laughing as well that can help you um, get into a more positive state emotionally you could try writing down five things you're grateful for if you're feeling sorry for yourself or negative and just in a bad state you can focus on things things to be grateful for in your life you can read an inspirational verse or affirmation. And I encourage you to actually gather a collection of those, maybe have a page, a document on your computer where you add those little positive things to it, your favorite verses. Every time you come across something, save it on the same page so that on a day you really need it, you can go back to that page and read some of those verses that you've been, been saving there. Connect with a supportive person. Maybe there's someone you could call on the phone. Maybe someone close to you, you could ask them to go for a little walk with you and just be with someone who, someone you know who tends to brighten your day when you're around them. You could write down three things that are going well in your life. So that's going to take some thought. Think about what's actually going okay and working out well for you. Hopefully there will be three things you can think of and focus on positive emotions. So here are some of those positive emotions that have been shown to raise your energy level when you focus on them. Love, I think that's obvious. If you focus on love, that's gonna help you feel more positive and joy. Bliss, the, the emotion of feeling blissful about things in life and kind of light and getting letting go of the heavy things that are weighing you down, gratitude, as we've already mentioned, um, feeling a sense of freedom. And maybe to feel that you need to go for a little walk and move away from the things that, again, that are tying you down and weighing you down um, to be free to, free to dance, free to go for a walk, free to, to be outside and breathe the fresh air, uh, feeling at peace, so if you can cultivate a peaceful sense within yourself, calm down the angry feelings that are there and instead find a way to peace. And then also appreciation, a state of, of actually noticing nice things around you and noticing nice things that other people do. And um, sometimes I just do that practice online, actually on social media. I skim through, I look for only the the positive sites that are there and I have several sites I go to that only post positive stories and uh, one of those on Twitter is called Goodable and you can find always positive news and positive stories there and I go there when I want to increase my sense of appreciation that life is really good there are lots and lots of good things happening in the world so quick tips to recharge your spiritual energy. One is to remember the saying, this too shall pass. Sometimes it's good to write that on, on a piece of paper and hang it on your bulletin board or a little sticky note and put it where you'll see it. So even when, when on a day when you're feeling overwhelmed or stressful to remember, this isn't going to last forever. This will pass. I will get through this. We, we will move on. Um, again, using prayer, meditation, or contemplation to help you go within for a few minutes each day. And I mentioned that as having a, that, a little self-care ritual, 15 minutes or so, just for you when you go within and you get into a relaxed state and uh, help yourself feel more at peace inside. Another technique is to take the big picture point of view. Don't get lost in the details of day-to-day -day life, particularly the details of things that aren't going the way you wish they would, and learn to look at everything from the bigger view, the overall view of what's happening in the world as a whole, or even in the universe as a whole, because we are just the tiniest little dot within this vast, vast universe. So remember, whatever it is that you're worrying about or stressing about compared to how, how massive this, these multiple universes are that we are a part of, the stress of this moment today for you in your life is actually 
very small. So using that higher perspective can help you take a step back from what you're worrying about and stressed about and put it in a more proper perspective. You can use a practice of making a list of the things that you can't control right now in your life and choose to let go of them. You know, that an event was canceled or your flight was canceled or someone um, decided not to come and see you when they meant to, or the gift you ordered is late and isn't going to come until after Christmas or you know, something else has, has gone wrong, but there's nothing you can do about it. You choose intentionally to let go of those things and to decide it's just okay. I'm going to move on and I'm going, going to let that go because I can't do anything about it. So I can't expend my energy and time being upset that this isn't working out for me. Um, another thing I like to use is the loving kindness blessing. This is something you can just say, like a mantra that's really lovely and you can use it at any time. Any day I say it to myself almost every day. Um, and it is this, these, uh, these five statements. May I be at peace. May my heart remain open. May I realize the beauty of my own true nature. May I be healed. May I be a source of healing for this world. So this is something that you can memorize or have it written and carry it with you. And you could make this part of your meditation or contemplation time, like a mantra that you say to yourself when you take that 15 minutes during the day for self-care that you say this little blessing for yourself during that time. So my hope is that you find new meaning and new joys during this holiday, that you find new ways of celebrating that, that bring you much light and love and that allow you to feel connected to others and to be aware of the beauty and the love that's present all around us all the time in this beautiful universe. A, a little reminder, I have a podcast, eolupodcast.com. My books are available at eoluniversity.com, Seven Lessons for Living from the Dying and The Journey from Ego to Soul. Those are my two newest books that you can get through my website. And happy holidays to you. Thank you for joining me here for this a little presentation on self-care during the holidays. Take care of yourself. Enjoy every moment. Bye-bye.